Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, well, today is Remembrance Sunday, uh, a day when we remember uh, those who have lost their lives mm -hmm. in conflict. Uh, and sad to say that all over the world, uh, conflict mm -hmm. is still going on and people are still uh, losing their lives. Uh, normally, the, the, the two-minute silence would be 11 o'clock, um, but we, right at the beginning of our uh, service this morning, uh, want to take uh, this two minutes mm -hmm. uh, just right at the start. And so, so let's come uh, and just spend uh, two minutes in silence uh, as we just remember those that have lost their lives in conflict. Father God, we do pray for all the, the families across this world who have lost people in conflict. Father, as we remember those that have died in conflict, mm -hmm. Lord, we, we thank you for the men and women, Lord, even in, in World War II, World War I, Jesus. Lord, who, who served Father God, Lord, to protect our country. Mm -hmm. Lord, uh, we Lord, uh, are sad that many lost their lives. But Lord, we pray, Father God, for, for your grace and, and your mercy upon, Lord, our world, our yes, nations, Father, Father God. Yes. Lord, our heart's desire is that conflict would end. That's but right. your word says that there always going to be conflict. Right. Uh, in fact, so we pray that peace would spread across our world. Jesus. Father God, we, we remember the greatest sacrifice of all, Jesus Christ, who came and died on a cross. Thank you, Jesus. That all men might Amen. be saved, Father thank God. You. And Lord, we thank you for your great love. Yes, Jesus. Lord, even in this time of covid Lord, in lockdown, we pray for our nation. Mm -hmm. We pray for the families affected. We pray for those that have lost loved ones. Jesus. Father God, Lord, that your peace would be upon them. Yes. That your peace would be, Lord, just poured out on the families, yes, Lord, as they grieve. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for all these men and women Lord, who stood in the gap on behalf of right. others. Thank you, Lord. And we do pray again for your blessing on this day. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks, Stephen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just want to give you a lovely warm welcome this morning. And just to let you know what's happening in the life of Dundee Elam Church. 
We have our Tuesday night, 7 o'clock to 7.15, our prayer and declaration. Yeah. Please come and join us if you've got any needs for prayer or you have family members that need prayer, then come and yeah. join us and put it on uh, the Facebook and we can pray for people. So at 7 o'clock to 7.15 on yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. And I'm glad to see and happy to see that Connect Groups are starting back. Yay! <laughs> That's on Wednesday night at 7.30. 7 and again, Stephen will send that link out. Just click on the link and please come and join us. It's yeah. lovely to see faces when we're on Zoom. Yeah. And also, again, a reminder, uh, come and join us for a pre-service prayer, 10 o'clock, <coughs> before our service starts. Uh, Stephen, again, will send the link out for that. But that's 10 o'clock, Sunday morning. Come and join us as we pray for the church as a whole on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's us. Is there anything else? No? Uh, yeah. Well, just an advance notice. Um, I'm going to be speaking today about uh, doing good works. Uh, doing good work. And uh, that is just something that I believe as we as Christians are called to do. Uh, Jesus himself went about doing good work. Um, but in December, as we head towards Christmas, uh, we are going to be looking at ways of blessing, uh, just blessing people, uh, calling it Christmas blessing. Um, and so that's just an advance notice to get you thinking um, about what or how you can bless uh, your neighbours, Mm -hmm. uh, your friends, um, and just that this Christmas, that we can just give them a, a small gift uh, and we'll come up with some suggestions for that, some help for that um, as well. And uh, I think the, uh, the the nation, our city, uh, just needs cheered up, yeah. uh, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just felt as a church, uh, it would be great uh, just to bless uh, people uh, with just a small gift yeah. Um, so look out for more details uh, about that. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's lovely to bless yeah. people, isn't it? Um, let me just pray for us before Stephen brings the word to us this morning. Father, we just thank you for your amazing love and your amazing presence. And we, I just ask that, Holy Spirit, you will come and fill us up to overflowing. Yeah. For every person that's watching this morning, I ask, Father, that you will just download your amazing love and your presence just from heaven, yeah. Father, into their very lives. That, Lord, that they would feel your presence wherever they are right now, wherever they're sitting, Father. And, Father, I ask that you will just speak directly into their heart and into their situation. Lord, I pray for Stephen as he brings the word that you'll just increase your presence on him, Father. And you will just fill him up, Father. And I pray that every word, Father, that comes from his mouth will come from you, Father. Mm -hmm. And Lord, that your word will penetrate to the hearts and the souls of the people that are listening this morning. And Lord, just let us know, Father, that you are with us, Father. For those that are struggling, Father, I pray peace and comfort over their lives right now, Father. Lord, I pray that they would just know your presence so real to them right now, Father, almost physically feel yeah. your presence with them, Father. So, Lord, we honour you and we bless you and we thank you. We thank you that you never leave us. Yeah, you sorry. are always with us, Father. You go, you go before us. You surround us, Father. And even in the times, Lord, when we just don't know what's happening, yeah. I'm so thankful that we can rest in you yeah. and we can trust in you, Father. Yeah. So we bless you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Amen.
lesser grace than this For we shall see you just as you are And how much you pay for us yes, we have no grace upon grace You have shown I want to talk this morning about doing good. Yes, doing good. Uh, what comes to your mind when you think of that word good? Uh, we have uh, so many different contexts in which uh, this word good is used. Uh, we talk about uh, eating some good food. That was a good meal. We talk about watching a good film. Uh, a good TV program. Uh, we try uh, and live our lives being good to others. Um, and so many other different contexts uh, in which this is used. Uh, one of my favourite films of all time, a Christmas movie uh, that I have watched hundreds of times. Uh, watched it last week and will continue to watch it uh, as we build up to Christmas. Uh, it's a wonderful life, a story uh, about George Bailey, played by James Stewart. Uh, George lives in Bedford Falls, uh, a small town. Uh, George uh, has a dream uh, to explore the world, but through circumstances, finds himself tied uh, and stuck in that small town of Bedford Falls. Uh, George lives his life for the benefit of others. He sacrifices many times so that others would have their needs met. Uh, George finds himself, uh, not through any fault of his own, in a place of uh, being ready to be bankrupt. Uh, and so George looks for a way out. Uh, he looks for help and discovers that one of the only ways or the only way that he feels is a way out is to kill himself. Um, but God hears the prayer of his family and sends an angel who comes to help George uh, through this time. Uh, one of the strategies or the strategy that the angel uses uh, is to show George what uh, life in Bedford Falls would be like if George had never been born if George had never lived, what would the lives in Bedford Falls be like? Uh, and George uh, sees uh, that his life has made a difference to many other people. Uh, the angel says to George, See George, you really have a good life. Your life has touched so many others. And I believe that that is the gospel. I believe that God wants our lives to touch other people's lives. 
And so this morning, uh, we're going to be looking at doing good and what God says about doing good. <clears throat> Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says this about Jesus. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Uh, do you know the truth is that if we are to live our lives as follower of Jesus, followers of Jesus, then that means living our lives the way that Jesus wants us to live our lives. And part of that is doing good. In the book of Titus that we will be reading in a minute, uh, this is such a, a small book, three chapters in this book, but has some great truths. Uh, this book will encourage you, this book will challenge you. Uh, and you will see the words doing good uh, throughout this book. Paul, in this book of Titus, shows us a picture of a life that can touch other people in small, decisive ways. You know, even having eternal consequences. Uh, Paul is writing this letter uh, to realign some belief systems uh, in people's lives. You know, there was some problems in this church. Uh, the believers' lives did not match up to their beliefs. Uh, what they believed uh, and what they were living their lives like were two different things. Uh, Paul instructs Titus to tell the people what good looks like. Uh, and so throughout this book in chapter 1, you will see Paul telling Titus what good looks like uh, within the church, uh, appointing good leaders. Uh, in chapter 2, uh, what good looks like in the context of family. In chapter 3, what good looks like in the context of our world. Uh, and so in uh, the verses in chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, uh, I believe is the foundation, uh, the core of Paul's message and instruction to Titus. Uh, just previously, uh, in chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, uh, Paul is describing uh, what a good life looks like, about being self-controlled, living wisely, showing integrity. Um, and you know, the truth is that if we go through life just telling people uh, what they must do, how they need to live, uh, telling ourselves how we need to live our lives, what we must do in our lives. Do you know, we can end up in a place where we just feel guilt, where we feel condemnation. It's not about rules and regulations. It is about the grace of God, as we will see. Uh, so I believe doing good starts with God. And it's his grace where we need to continue in. Uh, so let's read uh, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. This is what it says. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age where we wait for the blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good. Salvation is by grace and not good works. Doing good is a result of the grace of God shown to our lives. 
It's the outworking of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, the truth is that we don't work to please God. We don't work to earn his favour or his acceptance. Uh, this just leads to performance orientation. And you're looking at someone who lived their lives trying to do works to please our Heavenly Father. Uh, and I had it round the wrong way. It's when I understood and had that revelation of God's love for me. That Jesus died on the cross for me. That God showed me grace. That my life was changed. And the outworking of that is doing good. As I have been shown the goodness of God in my life, I want others to experience that. Uh, and so it's not a tick list where we just have a list of doing good and just tick it off. Do you know, and I really believe that is why we need to have that revelation uh, of the grace of God, what that really means for our lives. Uh, the other side of that is that grace uh, does not mean that we can live our lives any way that we want, knowing that God still loves us, knowing that he will forgive us. Uh, no, that is not what grace is. Because Paul uh, is very clear when he says that say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Uh, it teaches us God's word teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. And so there is times, a lot of times in our life, when we have to say no. Uh, so all over where you are, say no. Uh, we, we know how to say it. Uh, say no. We live our lives. We live our lives between the grace of God and the future glory of God. Jesus came to this earth. He died on a cross for our sins. And he will come back again. Jesus is alive. And he is coming back for his church. And in between, we are called to live our lives. Lives that please God. Lives that share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that happens by doing good so we as believers as Paul is instructing uh, is saying about uh, being committed to doing good and I believe that in doing good uh, it reveals some things and doing good what does that reveal uh, for the believer. Well, I uh, believe, first of all, it reveals God's love for all people. It says there that the grace of God appeared and offers salvation to all people. Ephesians 2.9 says that God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. In the previous verses, in, in verses 1 to 10, uh, why were the older men to show self-control? Why were the older women to, to live in ways that honoured God? Why were the young men to live wisely, and why were slaves to obey their master? And we have the answer in this book, uh, we see that it was not to bring shame on the word of God and those who were opposing the gospel would have nothing to say or nothing bad to say about the believers. Um, and so it was living lives with integrity. Uh, and I want to say that being good uh, is not so much about our actions but more about who we are. Not as much about what we do. It is more about who we are. 
as God has changed and is changing our lives, there is an outworking of that through our lives. Now, do you know, doing good, I believe, also changes our focus. It changes our focus. It takes our focus from ourselves and puts it onto others. Jesus was others-minded. Uh, many times in our life, we get so focused on our own stuff, and my stuff, uh, my problems, my circumstances, my issues. I'm not seeing that happening in my life. Um, but something happens when we focus on others, when we live lives doing good. Uh, it's a sacrifice. There is a cost uh, in serving others. I believe the grace of God flows through our lives. Uh, and I believe it gets the attention of our world. It will get the attention of our friends, our family, our neighbours, as we live our lives that please God. You know, doing good, I believe, reveals the presence of God in our life. Your changed life reveals God's presence and the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's why we can say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. That is why we can live self-controlled upright and godly lives because it is the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I love uh, what the, the message says about Galatians chapter 2 verses 19 to 21. This is what it says. What actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and working my head off to please God and it didn't work. So I quit being a lawman so that I could be God's man. Christ's life showed me and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. And I am no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine. Is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I am not going to go back on that. Wow. Wow, what amazing words, what amazing words. As God works in our life, as his grace fills our life, there is an outworking of that. There should be fruit in our life when God is working in our lives. Christ lives in me. It's his strength, it's his power that helps me to say no and to follow through on living self-controlled, a self-controlled life. It helps me to say no to ungodliness and worldly living. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 offers some great advice. It says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. Uh, and so, you know, we, we have got to, to face up with how we are living our lives, with how we are doing in our life. And again, uh, I want to say that this is not about making us feel guilty, feeling condemned, do you know, as I said, this is not about rules and regulations, about doing good. Most times as we live our life, do you know, as we mess up, we go back into that mentality, I'm not good, I'm not good enough. But Jesus Christ has made us good enough. And that is where we need to stay, close to Jesus Christ. 
And he gives us the power to live our lives in doing good to others. I believe the third thing it reveals, it reveals God's purpose for our life in doing good. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are children of God. We are loved by him. We are the family of God. We are a royal priesthood. Do you know, you are royalty uh, today. Tell yourself, I'm royalty because I am a child of the king. I am a child of the king. Uh, and so that is something to be celebrated. There's a story of when the Queen Mother's children, Elizabeth and Margaret, were young. Uh, and they were going out to a party or a state visit, uh, the Queen Mother would remind them uh, before they left that royal children have royal manners. Royal children have royal manners. She was reminding them that their behaviour needed to match their status. Their status came first and their behaviour was to follow. That is what Paul, I believe, is trying to get across in this book of Titus. That our status as children of God is the first. Our identity in God is first and foremost. And our behaviour follows our status. Now, doing good, I believe, is a priority. Uh, it says in verse 13 that we look forward to the hope of that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. There is an eternal perspective. Do you know, people need to be saved from their sins. They need to be saved from their self. Or they will go to a lost eternity. And so I believe this doing good has an eternal perspective on it for the believer. Uh, Paul uh, talks about what the world is like in Philippians. Uh, he says that people are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. And they think only about life on earth, the here and now. Which reminds us uh, that we, as believers, uh, need to learn to commit ourselves to doing good. Committed to not being distracted or cut up with the things of the world. Uh, and so this morning, my prayer is that you have been encouraged, that you have been challenged. Uh, if you are uh, going away feeling condemned or feeling guilty that you're not doing good enough that you are not good enough then I have failed I have failed in my message but what my prayer and my desire is that you will realize that you are a child of God God has shown his grace towards you God has filled you with his grace he has saved you and it's the outworking of that grace in your life that you are able to do good. That you are able to do good. As I said, it's not as much about what we do. It is about who we are. And so, as I finish, I really believe we are in times when harvest time, I believe, where we can see the gospel advancing. Even in lockdown, even in restriction, I believe God is still moving and working on people's lives. And all over this nation, all over the world, people are doing good. And thank God for every one of them. And where you are, in your community, in your workplace, in your family, uh, can we be looking for opportunities to do good? Uh, and what is doing good? Well, it can start with the, the way we speak. Uh, giving a, 
uh, an encouragement, uh, speaking positively, uh, speaking truth, uh, speaking um, just God's words of comfort and peace. It could be showing compassion. It could be buying some groceries for someone. Uh, do you know there are so many ways that we can show others the love of Jesus Christ in doing good. Doing good reveals God's passion for people. Doing good reveals God's presence in our lives. Doing good reveals, I believe, God's purposes for our lives. And doing good reveals the priority of our life. I will close with one verse, Titus 3, 14. It says, Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your grace and your love towards us. I thank you that you have called us to do good works, which you have prepared in advance beforehand. Father, today, I pray that if there's people just feeling, Lord, wearied or, or condemned, Lord, by trying to live their lives by rules and regulations, Lord, that you would just pour in your grace. Father, I ask for a revelation of your grace in our lives. Father, I ask for a revelation of what the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ means for our lives. Father, and as we begin to understand a bit more of what that means, that we will live our lives, Lord, the way that you have intended us to live, that, Lord, our lives will match up with what we say. Our lives will match up with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. He died on a cross for me, for us, for the world. And so, Father, I pray the blessing of God on your church today. I pray the blessing of God on those who are watching today. And I ask that you would fill them with your love. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for watching today. I pray you were blessed, or you were blessed uh, by this message. And remember, you are blessed to be a blessing.